Hello, and welcome to our latest in a series of podcasts and editorial board interviews ahead of the 2019 Peoria City Council at-large election. Uh, we have with us today at-large City Council candidate Jim Golden. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Uh, I'm Associate Editor Chris Kergard, along with Executive Editor Dennis Anderson. Good afternoon. Jim, I'm going to jump right in with you here and, and ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself and what prompted you to decide to run for city council. Sure. I'm a lifelong resident of Peoria. I uh, grew up here uh, basically in the Warcliffe subdivision is um, my high school years. I went to Sterling and then Peoria mm -hmm. High after that where I graduated and proud Peoria you know, resident mm -hmm. from that perspective. Uh, then I went on to Bradley. I uh, got a BSME from Bradley. I learned that. Uh, and as a work background, uh, basically two paths. One is with Caterpillar uh, and product development, different roles uh, from that perspective, and then running my own business. I went out on my own uh, trying to uh, generate ideas, concepts, and take those to market for primarily individuals and small businesses. And that's what I'm trying to bring to the, the election this time for at large is business development. But from a perspective, the other end of the spectrum, you have the Caterpillars, Bradley's, Ag, you know, those situations where they know how to do product development. Mm -hmm. But it's necessarily an individual and small business need help getting over some hurdles. So this would be kind of like a framework with the city being the main representative from that perspective and dealing with uh, Economic Development Council and like Peoria Next and just people in the community. Mm -hmm. So that's a little about my background. All right. Good. And that, that really takes us into what, what seemed to be the, the primary focus on, on a lot of your material in the questionnaire is uh, economic development and small business economic development in, in dealing with the city's economic woes. What isn't being done now by the city that should be? Well, it goes back to what I would say proactive. Mm -hmm. You have to actually help these people throughout the entire process. You know, proof of concept, concepting. But it's not just for that individual concept is for the person. Everybody has a different makeup, different strengths, so you have to tie that to uh, a part of the community that, that can help them get to other area. And with business development, the ultimate goal is to start a business or use local businesses here to generate income, jobs, uh, better paying jobs from that perspective. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm looking at doing. Okay, so city as facilitator, uh, uh, connecting people and, and ideas with other people who can help them? Right, because every project's going to be a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if it's a consumer product, uh, which primarily a lot of are from individuals, uh, you have a certain uh, skill set to get that to the marketplace. It might be, you know, something where somebody wants to help another company, but they don't want to take it out. So, th so that would be another avenue where income could be new income could be used for the city. How, how's the city's one-stop shop uh, approach that they offer for, for small businesses looking to start up? How, how's that uh, working out? Would you change anything there? or I would not. Uh, basically, what I'm looking at doing is impacting my skill set with the city. So if the city is working with small business development at, at Bradley, mm -hmm. then still maintain that because that's still revenue. It's mm -hmm. still, I'm not trying to discourage revenue. I'm just trying to get the other spectrum, other areas for new revenue into the city is what I'm looking at doing, and then starting a business. So if it's a maker space, you know, mm -hmm. from that perspective, that'd be great. And then, you know, you could openly look at this as outside the city of Peoria also. Mm -hmm. So it, it can be scaled up. Initially, I just look at the city mm -hmm. itself, uh, but then, you know, other East Peoria, for example, mm -hmm. they could use the same resources because it's not, you know, you're not building a building, you know, mm -hmm. it's an idea. So you're, you're, you're trying to get that idea Produced, mm -hmm. so you're trying to reduce the risk to it. So what's that take? Uh, sometimes it doesn't take very much. It just takes the right idea with the right person, the right part of the business mm -hmm. spectrum. Yeah, shouldn't the fifty thousand plus that we're spending with the EDC every year be getting us some of these services already? It does. The, the EDC they have, uh, you know, networks already in place, and that's why I would suggest you know, reaching out to them and using that existing services. You know, they have a supplier network, manufacturing network mm -hmm. that's in place. So so it's not neglecting, though. It's using those, but bringing them in instead of having somebody have to go out and find them. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the whole purpose is tying it in the right place. So each idea might have a different group of people, advisors, uh, people who are interested in that idea from, from that perspective. And it could change throughout the process because proof of, proof of concept is a different 
animal than, than reliability testing. Mm -hmm. So you might have different experts throughout the process. It, it, it's my thought. I don't have all the answers. You know, that's just what I'm trying to lay out there and start a conversation doing. Mm -hmm. in, in your private business now, what what are some of the businesses that we might have heard of that you've worked with recently? Right now, I'm an independent contractor, and what one of the main businesses I work with right now is Integris. They're out of East Peoria, mm -hmm. and they're a, a full house pro product development facility you know they can you know build an idea from 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 no idea at all to work with caterpillar which they do quite often on their projects uh engineering wise uh, just whatever it is so so it's focused to what is needed in the marketplace so, so that's what i do mainly from project standpoint the other side i do right now is patent work i'm a registered patent agent so what i do there is, is with individuals uh, you know i might team up with peoria next there might be an individual that needs just you know, one time help with our response or something, mm -hmm. and, and help them out in that way. So that's okay. Do, are you seeing a lot of potential that's not being used, utilized right now in Peoria that that, that you personally have seen? I do, but the impact is I'm an individual, so I'm an inventor also. So I've been through those hurdles, but just trying to get the individuals to the right people at the right time, it, it's hard to do. And as a businessman. I just don't have the capital or the marketing perspective to actually advertise to get those mm -hmm. at the right time. Because if you're inventing something, you know, once it's invented, you want to take it to, to market. But up until that point, you're looking at, okay, what's the risk? What, what do I need to do? So you're not really looking at a firm to help pull you in. So that's why I actually proactive. That's, so this is type of a skill set. We don't see too often. No. I don't think, at least in yeah. candidates for right. for city council. Um, have you been talking to people prior to this, and what made you get, got to say, "Hey, I'm gonna, I, I need to run for city council"? What, what happened? Well, I, there? I've done different avenues. Like I said, when I went out and started my own business in 2002, it was basically forming this this so-called network for myself. But I didn't have the collaboration to actually get it moving on. So it was one person only getting so far. So like proof of concept, that's really all I could bring to mm -hmm. an individual. After that aspect, you need the other skill sets, which the city has with, with the EDC, Peoria Next, even you know people working at Caterpillar. It doesn't have to be somebody full time to actually help out. It could be a, you know one day here, one day there, J just giving them the advice they need to keep moving. Great. You saw that, I'm sure you're watching what happened with the city budget and how, that we lost some jobs, got some new fees coming in for stormwater and uh, the property fees. Right. And um, where, where did the city council go right and where did they go wrong in that, that process? Well, I think where they went wrong is, from my perspective, is looking at it from two standpoints as a fee on residents from that perspective for generating revenue or elimination of services. It's not looking at, okay, how do we build up new business? How do we get new revenues into the city? It's how can we, with what we have, how can we get more funds into these programs? So that's where you see the fees coming in. And, and they're fee-based because it, it takes over the entire city. You know, that way you have a universal fee on, on the residents. Uh, and, and another thing with, with impacts, with fees, one of the issues for Peoria revenues is local sales tax. You know, it's dropping because of, you know, internet sales and loss of mm -hmm. brick and mortar stores. So that's really the only other revenue stream that would really impact greatly the city of Peoria. You have other, other revenue streams, but a lot of it goes to the state from that perspective. So if you had better income on internet sales, most of that revenue generated goes to the state, not the city of Peoria. So local sales tax is what you need. So you need to purchase locally. You need jobs here locally to bring in that, that added revenue. Mm -hmm. the, the costs that come from that, though, we, we saw local sales tax revenue fall almost a half million dollars this last year. We're looking at, over the next 10 years, $80 million in additional spend on paying our, our pension costs over and above what we've spent this past year on, on pension costs, that, that's a lot of money that you have to make up through growth in, in economic development and additional sales tax growth. How, how do you get to that point and, and do so on the same timeline that we have the increased cost? Right. Well, I look at it, you know, the fee for public safety is the three-year fee. Mm -hmm. So business development probably takes three years to get things rolling. So... 
I'll give you this example. One of my first clients were two brothers who came up with an idea. They're, they're sportsmen, uh, bow hunters, so they came up with a, a lighted knock. And they actually stuck, you know, were working different jobs, opened their own business in Yates City. So not only did they develop a product, they built a building in Yates City, so you have, you know, sales tax coming in, but also property tax. And then there are also employees. Uh, at that time, there was probably 40, 50 employees uh, working at, you know, for all different aspects of, of that product. So again, you can say it as, you know, it's sales tax uh, from that perspective, but it brings an entire arrangement that, that I'm hoping to bring into it. So it's not just a product that you sell, it, it's actually developing a company that stays here and brings in employees, which, which just expands year after year. So it's not like one year it stops, you just keep going and going, and the more people are aware of it, the more use it's gonna become. How many businesses like that, or, or how many new jobs do we need to produce in town to, to make up that that deficit of, of $500,000 a year shaving off our sales tax revenue now and, and the increase in pension costs? What, what, what should our goal be there? Well, that, that's kind of unanswerable because of the type of jobs mm -hmm. that they're going to be there. Uh, from my perspective, every job, I'm going to go one at a time, mm -hmm. you know, and build it up. It's not that I, if I don't make, you know, 2,500 jobs, that business development wasn't successful mm -hmm. because it, it is successful for every business that, that goes through that. So it's new revenue in. It's not necessarily replacing what we need. Mm -hmm. uh, statistics are statistics, but it's just changing the climate is, is mm -hmm. what I'm looking at doing. So if you can provide a climate for business development, more people are going to want to do it, and it's going to expand. It's, so it's technology. It's not a, a, a storefront from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, I got the impression from your questionnaire, too, that uh, one of the things that you're open to offering more of for economic development is special service areas for, for businesses that want to locate here. Uh, for What sort of instances would uh, would you be open to those? In, in all instances? Because there, there was some controversy over a special service area for a fast food restaurant this last year. Well, I guess I should... To, to clarify, I'm mm -hmm. not really for SSAs, okay. uh, just from the fact that it's it's a pass-through to the developer. Mm -hmm. uh, the city gets money to put it into place mm -hmm. from that perspective, but it, it's to benefit the developer from that mm -hmm. aspect. Uh, so, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily think it's the best idea for the first mm -hmm. time uh, from, from an area perspective, because, again, it takes away sales tax mm -hmm. uh, and, and disposable income. There's only so much in the area. So if it's going more to the developer uh, to bring into a restaurant or something mm -hmm. like that, that that's going to take income from other restaurants in the same mm -hmm. area. Uh, that, that's not one of the things I'm really for. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, how much outreach have you done in, in all the neighborhoods around town? Um, south Side, East Bluff, Northern? What, what, what? Well, the way I did it, what I reached out to do in, in the committee months is for getting my signatures, mm -hmm. I did what was easiest for me. So I did my neighborhood association and just kept walking out. So that would be Forest Hill subdivision, uh, which is west uh, area, and Warcliffe uh, from mm -hmm. that perspective. Mm -hmm. And now that I have my brochures, I'm, I'm trying to go out, uh, but because of the snow accumulation uh, from that perspective, <laughs> I, I haven't really mm -hmm. sure. done too much so yeah. far. So, so that that's where I've had most of my Interactions with, with where are you, what are you finding? Each neighborhood has its own own needs and opportunities, and that um, for concern for us is the south side. What uh, what, what can you bring to in order to help that? The, well, first, what are the top three concerns that the neighborhood has, and how would you go about f addressing those? Well, I think racial equity, uh, poverty. And, and just jobs. I think those are three three of the keys that I've seen just from the forums uh, mm -hmm. I've been, been to. Uh, and, and again, I'm just going to business development. You, you know, if, if you can train somebody to do a better better job, better paying job, that's going to help whatever community it's from. And if, with idea generation, they're going to start out in the, the residential. You know, they're not going to necessarily come from the commercial buildings from that perspective. So you build up a neighborhood one house at a time, one idea at a time. And then you can also put things in place like uh, maker spaces. There are some already down down on Jefferson and, and Washington from that perspective. But put together ability to bring a you know, concept to market from 
uh, proof of concept standpoint. So you have the basics there, and then you know start seminars uh, just just to bring a tightening of that area together. Hmm. The, the city spent a couple hundred thousand dollars on uh, on a study uh, to address some of these issues of, of inequality that that we're seeing on unemployment, underemployment. Uh, difficulty in educational attainment in, in some of the older, poorer neighborhoods of the city. And the, the end result of, of that taxpayer money spent has been no concrete, cohesive plan to come out of City Hall. What do you think the holdup is there, and, and what would you do to address that? Well, it goes back to funding. I don't think the city has funding uh, to put a cohesive plan together mm -hmm. for, for a given area. Uh, you know, you see... Uh, economic development through uh, building up road growing areas. Mm -hmm. uh, then you also see uh, stormwater, you know, ideas around stormwater, uh, mm -hmm. retention on the roofs, uh, you know, make them so they're, they're more water friendly uh, from that perspective. So it, it goes back to funding. Okay. The other challenge that, that the city has faced and, and that advocates have too is, is trying to, to get buy-in and, and pressure and attention on those issues from people in neighborhoods that don't appear as directly affected, you know, neighborhoods north of War Memorial Drive where, where people can look and say, not my problem, I don't live there. How would you work to, to get people in those areas of the city that are affected because of the effects on the, the whole city, how would you get them to, to care and, and to push for the city to, to take more of an interest and make more of an effort? Again, my philosophy is one at a time. You know, as an activist, I'm not really here to, to tell somebody north of War Memorial uh, what, what they believe in or, or not believe mm -hmm. in, but just show them, you know, bring them, to, you know, if they're an inventor, you, you know, have an inventor club down the south end. So you're bringing in the different people in the different times for the same reason. Mm -hmm. so, so it's not, you know, one against the other. It's just trying to grow a, a, as a city would grow. Okay. Uh, as a city council member, if you're fortunate enough to be elected, you'd have one employee on the council who would report or go from report directly to members of the council. That's the city manager. What's your assessment of, of the job that Patrick Yurick is doing? I think he's doing fine. Uh, I mean, as a city manager with, with the restraints that he has uh, from that perspective, uh, you know, losing staff is never easy. Mm -hmm. how, how do you compensate for that? Uh, do you have more contractors. Uh, you still have to get some of the work done. Uh, it, it's a different way of managing. So I, I think he's doing fine. I, I don't have a problem with his management. Mm -hmm. The city's also coming off a, a record tying year for homicides in the city. From from the people that you're talking to as you knock on doors and, and go to the forums, what, what more or, or what different should the city be looking at in its policing strategy to, to deal with that violence? Well, the way I look at that is is to review the, the Don't Shoot program. How helpful has that been over the years? I, I know early on it was very beneficial. Uh, has it hit a stumbling block, a wall? What can be done in that aspect? And then I haven't talked personally with a police chief, but I would, I'm sure he has programs in place to address that. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the expert. Uh, so going out and, and you know, saying you need to do this or to do that, I would wait and see what the city police chief has to say. And I haven't had that conversation with him. Okay. I figure I'll wait till our primary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we're uh, we're kind of coming up toward the, the tail end here of, of our chat. I, I want to ask you a couple of philosophical questions, too, because, again, if you're elected, you're going to be privy to certain information on, on the council, not just about private personnel issues, but you know, you're you going to have a fire hose of information where maybe members of the, the general public are, are looking at a little less or are familiar with a little bit less on something. Uh, so you're going to have a lot of information available when, when you arrive at, at what you believe ought to be done or how you believe you ought to vote. And you're going to have members of the public who have different perspectives that, that you hear from your constituents. If, if you get you know, a majority of your constituents telling you, do this, but your heart, your mind, your values, or your research says, no, do this instead... Which one wins there? What what you think you ought to do, or, or what your constituents are telling you to do? 
Well, the way I look at that is I do have my views, and it's good to get those out so people understand who I am as a person from that perspective. But when it comes to voting, it is the entire city. So it's, it's the view of the city, not necessarily my view. So I would put my view behind what the city actually wanted to happen. Mm -hmm. I try to convince the best I could in the time between knowing what they're looking for and when the vote is. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I, w I would defer to what the city as a whole wants mm -hmm. to see. All right. And the the most important number for you as a member of the council is going to be six. Got to get five people to agree with you on, on anything you want to do in order to get it enacted into policy. There's a lot of strong viewpoints on the council from a lot of years of experience and, and a lot of different political perspectives. How do you convince five other people to vote your way on something where they may not agree with you at the beginning? Uh, compromise. I, I mean, you need to have a way of showing your views in different ways from that perspective. So if there is something where you might get five votes, six votes, uh, you just have to go back to what you believe is right for the city and provide those viewpoints to the council. And, and uh, they're smart people. They, they know mm -hmm. what they're doing. So, you know, they'll do what's right uh, ultimately for the city. Mm -hmm. About how much uh, time in a, in a given week, if you were elected, would you expect to be spending on, on council-related work? Uh, that, that again, a question I can't really answer since I'm new to it. Uh, I'm sure there's a learning curve. They always say there's a learning curve. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I do take it as a part-time job uh, from that perspective. So I wouldn't be looking at 40 hours a week uh, mm -hmm. doing that type of work. Uh, I just don't see that as a need. Mm -hmm. At times it will, but but overall uh, I, I see it as giving back to the city. So mm -hmm. I see it as a part-time job. You, you talked just a minute ago about uh, compromise. How, what have you, what experience do you have that would help you in terms of navigating that uh, the political scene in, on city council? Well, with product development, it's always compromise. You have you know what you need as product. There, there's a set of criteria uh, that you're trying to meet. It's always a trade-off. So getting the for example, with Caterpillar, you have different organizational groups with their areas that they want to see in this product. So you have to work through those with those groups to get the best product out the door uh, effectively. And, and Cat's great at doing that. So you, just using those type of situations uh, in a different manner, I guess you'd look at it. From. Great. All right. Excellent. Uh, and uh, one, one last question that uh, that we've been trying to ask folks, which is voters have a choice in, in the uh, February 26th primary. And if you make it through that, they got another choice to make on, on April 2nd. Why you instead of the other guys? Again, my background is completely diverse from what's being done today. So uh, product development, you know, I'm going to that's my message is building up product development and it's one idea at a time one small business at a time and if that works the way i'm looking at it that will build up an entire city and it won't be a negative it'll be new revenue in new jobs is is not transferring from north of the city south of the city east west however you want to regionalize it it's new to the city all right excellent city council at large candidate jim golden thank you very much thank good you. luck appreciate thank it thank you mm -hmm.